Welcome to today's lecture. This is going to be the last lecture on blow room. So, what are we going to discuss today? It is all about process performance. So, by now we have all learnt what are the various machines which are used in blow room, what are the working principles of those machines and little description about those machines. These are the things which I, we have already learnt. Now, the, the topic that we are going to discuss is how to determine the performance of the blow room line. So, let us get into this now. Now, process parameters are or process performance parameters are cleaning efficiency. You see that main purpose of the blow room is to clean the material, especially when we are processing cotton fiber. But if we process synthetic fibers like viscose rayon fiber or polyester fibers or such fibers which do not contain any impurities, then cleaning is not required there. So, cleaning especially is important when we are going to process cotton. Other than cleaning efficiency, the other parameters which are really important is their nap generations. We will see that lap weight variation if we are producing laps and the other thing is something new which is tapped weight reduction. See, blue room is going to break the tufts, big tufts into smaller and smaller and smaller tufts. So, we can also think that blow room is a machine which is breaking the tufts and making them smaller. Especially it is true for synthetic fibers where cleaning is not really so important. At the same time, the tufts are also becoming more and more voluminous. So, therefore, opening also is important for us. So, usually we look into these aspects and the other thing is also waste level. How much waste that the blue room line is going to generate? This is also very, very important. So, these are the process performance parameters by which we will try to judge the performance of the entire blow room line. So, see unnecessary waste reach in lint is not really good. So, the right hand side as an example we are showing you just one cleaner and on the left hand side what we see is a mixture of trash and lint which is the input there is some droppings under the cleaner which is containing both trash and lint and the output is trash as well as lint. So, if we the darker part indicates proportionately trash percentage. So, if you look at the darker proportion in the three rectangles which are representing input, output and west, you will find that the darker part is more in the west than what was in the input or what is in the output. Obviously, output should have minimum trash percentage and therefore, we have a thin dark line or dark area there representing very little trash, majority is clean cotton. Anyway, so the west collected under the beater or the cleaning unit consists of both trash and lint. The term lint means spinable fiber, the fibers which we can use. Now, unnecessary waste reach in lint is to be avoided. So, the lint part which is a usable fiber, we need to minimize its loss. That is one of the very important aspect while we are trying to set the machine so that we get desired cleaning and not only desired cleaning, we have to also see 
how do we keep the waste at the minimum level. So, the reason is that the cost contribution of the raw material in the yarn cost is very high almost 60 to 65 percent. That means, let us say the cost of 1 kg of yarn is 100 rupees, then the cost of fiber is around 60 to 65 rupees. So, that is the that basically means the cost contribution of the fiber in the cost of the yarn. Therefore, since if the measured part of the yarn cost is because of the fiber, therefore, we have to make sure that the loss of fiber under any machine is minimum, especially the spinable fibers. Okay. Cleaning is not possible without losing some fibers. Unfortunately, if we want to clean the fibers, there will be always some loss of good fibers also. We have not been able to design any machines where we will be able to only take out the trash, but not a single good fibers or lint. That kind of design is still not there. So, whatever machines are there in terms of cleaning units, all those machines, it is extracting trash, but simultaneously also extracting some fibers. So, some loss of good fibers, spinable fibers is inevitable. The process has to be therefore adjusted in such a way that the proportion of spinable fiber is minimum and the proportion of trash is maximum. So, we have to see that in this particular diagram, the darker part that we see in the west, it should be more and more and the white part which is representing lint should be less and less. Okay. So, from there we move on to the next slide. So, what are the factors which affect waste level? Where when you talk about waste, this means it is a combination of both trash as well as fibers put together. So, on the right hand side there is this diagram showing there is a bitter and the feed roller, feed plate with the beater. So, factors that affect the waste level, they are listed here in this particular diagram. So, what we see here, the first thing is the trash percentage in the feed material. So, how much is the trash in the input material? That is the first thing that decides the level of waste. Second is speed of the opening device of the cleaning unit. At what speed? this beating element is running that also matters. Third thing is the setting that is the gap as shown in the diagram delta S between the feed roller or the feed pedal and the line of action of the beating elements of the beater. So, that small gap which is shown here as delta S, this is also very, very important. Then comes the grid bars inclination and grid bar openings. So, what is the inclination angle of the grid bar with respect to the line of action of the opening elements of the beater? So, that what is the inclination which matters as well as what matters is the gap that exists between the successive grid bars that also is important. That means, is the setting of the grid bars in terms of the inclination and the gap that we maintain, how close the space the grid bars are that also is important. Okay. Let us go from here to the next. Sometimes we need to calculate what is the average trash in the mixing. So, average trash in the mixing if we want to calculate, because many a times, most of the time actually in the industry, generally 2, 3 or 4 different types of fibers of different varieties are mixed and each variety may have different level of trash content. And an example has been given just to find out how do we calculate the average trash here. Like the mixing components are A, B, C, D, there are 5 components 
the respective percentage in the mixings are also given in the table and the trash content in the individual mixing component is also listed here. From there, if we try to find out what is the average trash in the mixing, we can say you take the trash content of component A 3.6, multiply it by its percentage that is used in the mixing. Therefore, 3.6 into 20 plus 4.7 into 30, like that we go, we add them together and divide by 100. That is a very simple calculation and from here we get a figure 4.99, almost 5 percent. That means, if we use A, B, C, D, E fibers or the varieties of fibers with the respective trash content as shown, the average trash value in the mixing will be around 5 percent. So, this is simple, this basically this is the kind we call it weighted average. Now, let us see what is the influence of trash percentage in the feed. So, let us look at this. If we see the diagram on the right hand side, it is a plot between trash percentage in mixing and waste percentage that is generated under the machine. So, the relationship is represented by a straight line. It is a very simple straightforward relationship. That means, the more trash is there, the more waste will generate. When other things remain constant, that is we are keeping the speed of the machine same, we are not playing with the uh, settings and inclination angle of the grid bars, everything keeping same. If we keep feeding, we change the input material in terms of percentage trash that it has, then this is what we are going to get. More is the trash, more is the waste percentage. And the practical relationship that has been shown by some researcher is stated here. And this is the straight line. So, you are all familiar with this you know, kind of equation that is used to describe the straight line is y equal to mx plus c. So, here in one particular case, it has been shown that y equal to x plus 0 0.5, the constant c is 0 0.5, x indicates the percentage level of trash in the mixing and the slope of the line is m is 1. That means, the inclination angle of the line is 45 degree. So, that is that means, if I have 4 percent trash in mixing, we can expect 4.5 percent waste. If we have 6 percent trash in the mixing, we can expect 6.5 percent waste. This is one relationship that has been found out. The other one also has been stated is as y equal to 1.2 x, but there is no c here. So, therefore, by if I go by the equation 2 and if I say I have a trash percentage which is 5 then my waste value is going to be 5 into 1.2, which is 6 percent. So, these are the empirical relationship that has been established. The other factor is the influence of feed pedal distance from the beater. So, that is delta, delta S as shown in the diagram. What we see here, if we look at the graph which has been drawn at the bottom, what we see here, as the distance delta S increases, the percentage of waste goes down. This is a typical relationship or nature of the curve that has been shown by some author. That means, more delta S, less waste. So, waste droppings will decrease with an increase in distance delta s. Why it is happening? As we increase delta s, more fibers leave the gripping area under the feed roller before they come under the action of the beating elements of the beater or the opener. That gap we have increased. So, by the time they, they leading part of the fiber comes into contact with the beating element, they have already left the 
third roller grip. So, they have become loose now and therefore, the intensity of the action goes down and hence the waste reduces. So, we are not really breaking the tufts the way we, are, we can break them if the gap is shortened and if the tufts becomes big without being broken and if they are made to pass over the grid bars, then because the tufts are larger, they do not drop down, they will be able to cross the grid bar zone. As a result, we get less waste. Next is the influence of grid bar. Now, when you discuss about grid bar influence, there are two things that you have to keep in mind. One is what is the grid bar inclination angle? So, you see the graph shown on the right hand side. The top one is representing angle of the grid bar versus waste percentage that is generated. The next one is grid bar openings and the waste percentage that is generated. So, what it is shown that with the increase in grid bar angle, the waste is rising, trash percentage, trash waste and cage loss. What is cage loss? Cage loss is the dusty air that is being drawn, we call it cage loss, because whenever the fibers after being opened, they are being transported and they land on the cage it is a basically perforated drum, then lot of finer trash particles, the dust, they are also sucked out. So, they actually contribute to the weight of the trash, but they are also taken out and they, they again go and get deposited on the filter. So, that also we have to take it out because in the input they are contributing to the overall trash level. Anyway, so, as the grid bar angle is inclined more and more, we generate more and more trash. So, increase in grid bar angle increases the gap between the grid bars and thus more space becomes available for both trash and fibers to drop down. So, what we see that the waste percentage goes up and this waste contains both fibers as well as trash. Here, one should understand that waste goes up basically means it is a combination of trash or impurities as well as fibers both. Very high angle, see there is a peak and this peak is observed around 30 degree angle and if we go beyond 30 degree, there is a reduction. So, very high angle reduces the space and aggressiveness of the grid birds in scraping the top surface, thus the waste will reduce. So, once we go beyond a certain angle, the waste does not increase. So, therefore, the optimum angle from the waste point of view is 30 degree. Now, comes to the cleaning part. The earlier we have discussed just waste, which contains both trash particles as well as fibers. Now, when it comes to cleaning, that means how much trash we have extracted or we have removed, how much cleaning has been achieved. Now, on the right hand side, there is a diagram, trash percentage versus cleaning percentage or cleaning efficiency, we can say. And what we see here? that with the rise, the increase in trash percentage, the cleaning is going to increase. Initially, we see up to 4 percent of the trash, the rise is almost linear and then the, it is becoming gradually the curve is leveling off. That is, once we go across the trash value of 4 percent, then the rise, rate of rise of cleaning gradually reduces 
and become less and less. So, this is a typical curve that has been reported by many people. The Bloom line removes around 40 to 70 percent of the impurities of the trash particles. So, in the Bloom, we never try to remove all the trash. We target a value which is somewhere between close to 50 percent or 60 percent generally in this range. The cleaning depends upon the trash percentage. You see here that when the trash level is high, obviously cleaning is rising. The rate of rise falls as we go beyond 4 percent, but it is rising. So, cleaning efficiency will increase if in the input we have more trash. Now, this cleaning can be adjusted on the basis of two indices. One is cleaning efficiency and the other is trash in waste. Cleaning efficiency is the, it is the trash percentage eliminated with reference to the trash in feed expressed as a percentage. And the other one is trash in waste that is amount of extracted trash in relation to the total amount of waste. Obviously, the greater the trash percentage, the better it is. So, in the waste, we would expect the proportion of trash is more and proportion of lint or the good fibers is less. But the important point to remember is that the waste will always have some good fibers. There is no way to extract only trash but not any good fibers. Without losing good fibers, we will not be able to uh, clean the fiber, we will not be able to extract the trash particles. So, cleaning efficiency, the formula is trash in feed minus trash percent in delivery divided by trash in feed into 100. This is a simple formula which is used in the industry. So, very, very simple type of formula. Now, if let us say x is the trash percentage in feet, all right, y is the waste percentage collected. So, we had shown showing these figures in the diagram also, x is here, the y is here and the trash in the lint is shown as z. So, x and z represent the proportion of trash in input and output, whereas y is representing proportion of waste, not proportion of trash in waste. You should not get confused with this. X and Z represents trash percentage in input output and Y represent the proportion of waste. So, the trash percentage in the delivery with respect to feed. So, what is the Z, the trash in the lint or in the sorry in the output is Z what will be this percentage if we try to find out the value with reference to feed or reference to input because we have removed some fibers as waste. That means, if we start with 100 gram fiber here, we may have removed 5 gram fiber here. So, what is left here is 95 gram. So, this trash value is the proportion of trash in the 95 gram of cotton. So, we have to find out if that is the percentage of trash, then what is the value of the trash percentage with reference to the input. And if we try to find it out, that is the trash percentage in delivery with respect to feed, it is going to be z into 100 minus y by 100. All right? This is going to be the formula. So, trash collected in the west with ref respect to the feed or with reference to feed, therefore, is going to be how much? x minus z into 100 minus y by 100, this value. Therefore, if this is the trash collected, then what is the proportion of trash in the collected west? Obviously, if this is the trash percentage collected here, this divided by the west that is y, 
multiplied by 100 will give me the trash percentage in the collected waste, because waste collection is y which is at the bottom of the denominator and on the numerator we have the proportion of trash that we have removed that is x minus z into 100 minus y by 100. Okay. So, if this is the proportion of trash in the waste, so proportion of lint is going to be 100 minus the proportion of trash in the collected waste. If once we know this figure, then if I subtract this figure from 100, we get the lint in the collected waste. So, this is these are the formula that we have to use while solving some numericals. So, we will now solve one numerical, so that you understand this. Now, read the numerical first. In a blow room line, the fine cleaner gives a cleaning efficiency of 24 percent for trash content in the feed, which is 4.3 percent. So, the input we have 4.3 percent trash and the cleaning efficiency of the cleaning unit is 24 percent. The amount of waste collected under the cleaner is 2.8 percent that has been also stated. Calculate the trash percentage and lean percentage in the waste. So, out of this 2.8 percent waste that we have now we have under the machine, what proportion is trash and what proportion is lint. All right. So, if we go for the solution, the value of x here is 4.3, it has been given. The value of y is also given that is 2.8. First, we have to find out what is the value of z. So, z is going to be how much? Because we know the cleaning efficiency, it is 4.3 into 100 minus 24 by 100. 24 is the cleaning efficiency of one particular cleaner, and that gives me a figure 3.27. So, trash percentage in the delivered material that is in the output is going to be 3.27. So, in the feed we have 4.3 trash content, in the output we have 3.27. So, there is some cleaning that has happened and this cleaning of that unit is to the order of 24 percent only. This is not the cleaning of the entire blow room line, it is the cleaning of one particular cleaning unit. All right. From there, so, trash percentage in the delivery with respect to feed is going to be how much? So, 3.27 multiplied by 100 minus 2.8 by 100, that formula we have in the previous slide, and we get a figure 3.178, which is close to 3.18. So, trash in the collected waste is going to be this formula is there multiplied by 100. We put this value substitute, we get a figure 40 percent. That means, trash in the waste is going to be 40 percent. So, trash value in the lint is going to be 100 minus 40, that is 60 percent. That means, out of this 2.8 percent trash waste that we collect, 40 percent of this is trash. 60 percent is lint, 60 percent is, is lint. That is the answer to this particular example. Now, let us say if we ignore the correction that is trash percentage in the delivery with respect to feed. So, what we are doing in the previous case that whatever was the trash percentage in the output that was with respect to the output. So, we are, we are actually doing a correction and we want to know what is the trash percentage in the output with reference to the input and therefore, we had to use 
we have to transform that value with respect to the input material. Now, if we say this is called a correction, that is what we have done. Suppose we ignore this correction, then what value we get? So, trash in feed is 4.3 x, we know y is 2.8. So, trash in delivery we have already calculated, which is 3.27. So, trash in collected waste, if we simply do not go the correction of z as we have done earlier, then it is going to be x minus z by y and this value is going to be 37 percent. So, trash in the collected waste now is going to be 37 percent. What was the value we got earlier? Earlier the value was 40 percent. So, by doing this correction, the trash percentage at earlier it was 40 percent, now it is 37 percent. So, what is the difference it makes? Only 3 percent. Therefore, for all practical purposes, the trash percentage in the west can be calculated as using this simple formula, where we do not go for the correction. We ignore that, because it will not make much of a difference in an industrial situation. So, we have to say trash percentage in feed minus trash percentage in delivery divided by west percentage. And this formula we can straight away use to find out what is the trash percentage in the west that can be calculated easily. So, that means, in this case that would be how much 4.3 minus straight away we will write like this one uh, sorry the way we have calculated here 37 percent and that is not much different from 40. So, we can straight away use this x minus z by y is basically this formula that can be done. So, now we will go to NAP generation. See so, Blodum generate NAPs. What is NAP? NAP is an entangled mass of fiber, very, very tiny entangled mass of fiber is called naps. And these naps are something which spoils the appearance of the yarn, spoil the appearance of the fabric, downgrades the quality and therefore, we have to make sure that the naps are minimum in the final yarn. So, we have to see how to minimize the generation of naps or how to eliminate naps. Naps are present in the bale cotton. The synthetic fibers will not have any naps. In the bale cotton, we will find naps and these naps are there because at the time of ginning process, these naps are generated and therefore, they are present in the bale cotton. Now, when this cotton is processed by the broom line, there are so much of mechanical stress which is acting on the fibers. So much of beating actions, the fibers are made to travel from one machine to another machine. There are a lot of you know, rubbing action which the tufts are experiencing, the fibers are experiencing. So, as a result, what happens? At the cleaning, the while the cleaning operation is going on, the nap level in the cotton usually rises. That is, whatever is the nap level in the bale cotton, we find that in the final in the lab or at the output of the blowroom line, the nap level has gone up. So, we have to have some amount of control because we know that we cannot create a situation where the nap level will never rise. This is not going to happen. The nap level with respect to feed is always going to be little more and therefore, we can find out what is the increase in the percentage value of nap and that is 
can be calculated as shown by the direct by the formula nets per gram in feed cotton minus nets per gram in delivered cotton divided by nets per gram in feed cotton into 100 that gives you the percentage increase in the level of nets in the output. We have to ensure that a certain prescribed limit or industrial standard generally the lab level can go up by 60 percent to 100 percent sometimes 100 to 150 maybe, but if the lab level goes up by 500 percent, 100 percent then something is going wrong with the processing either some beating elements are blunt or the, uh, the grid bars are blunt something must have happened if we get an abnormal rise in the percentage value of NEPS. So, the causes are written blunt opening elements, damaged or blunt grid bars, repeated treatment of the fibers held by the beating elements due to wrong setting of the stripping rail, too much soft twist in the mixing. So, if we add too much of soft twist, what is soft twist? Soft twist means the waste that we generate during the drawing operations, the operation on draw frame or on uh, during combing or during your operation during your uh, speed frame that is while you make the roping. There is a lot of waste also generated in while the material is processed on those machines and these are known as soft waste. So, these are good fibers, they are long length fibers, they are not very short, this cannot be thrown away. So, what it we do that part of it we reprocess. So, whatever a particular meal is going to generate, part of it is mixed with the virgin cotton and then we process them together. But there is a limit because these fibers have undergone a lot of stresses. Therefore, there is, such, there is some amount of reduction in their bending rigidity because they have been stressed out. And therefore, too much addition of these fibers in the mixing is detrimental from the point of view of NEP generation. So, there percentage should be always less than 5 percent, but if we add 10 percent then we have problem in terms of finding out too many NEPs by the time the material pass through all the blow room lines, blow room, all the machines in the blow room line. So, these are the reasons how to improve the performance now. Now, degree of opening and cleaning depends upon machine parameters, process parameters, material parameters, position of the machine in the sequence of machines and the ambient conditions that is what is the humidity and what is the temperature of the shade. All of them will have influence on the degree of opening and cleaning. Machine parameters means type of opening device, drums with pins or bladed beater or spike lattices or simply spikes on the beaters, everything will matter. Type of feed, loose feed or clamp feed or roller feed or pedal feed, we have already learnt about them in the previous lectures, area of the grid surface this is also important, how much area under the machine is covered by the grid bars. If a large area is covered that means, the material get sufficient time to be cleaned whereas, they are crossing the grid bar zone and the grid settings where the spaces between the grid bars, the inclinations of the grid bars are important. Process parameters are speed of the opening device at what speed I am running the beating element and the spacing of the feed from the opening device that is the gap 
delta S that we have seen earlier. Material parameters are thickness of the feed mat. The mat of fibers that you are feeding to a particular beating device or a beater or a cleaner, what is the thickness of the mat of fibers that you are you know, feeding? That also will matter. The material throughput, how much material is being fed? How many kg per unit time? This is also a matter. Position of the machines in the broadroom line, whether it is at the beginning of the line or it is at the end of the line and also ambient conditions, humidity and temperatures. Humidity will make the fibers soft, if the fibers, cotton fibers will absorb lot of humidity. As a result, friction between the fibers will increase and opening and cleaning will become more and more difficult. So, everything, all the parameters that we have listed earlier, this is given in the form of a chart here. See factors affecting machine parameters, process parameters, environmental parameters and the material also. So, whatever we have stated the same things are written here. So, this is a chart and this chart gives you the various parameters which will affect the cleaning efficiency of the machines. Now, we have given another table. In this table, what we see? We have written the machine parameters. The various parameters are listed. They will suppose these are the cause like then the effect on cleaning and waste is written and the reason is given in very short few words only. Like say machine parameter type of feed, we can have two type of feed cause is clamp feed or loose feed and the, uh, the effect of clamp feed on cleaning is more and if we have clean clamp feed in a particular machine, we can expect more cleaning and more waste also and if we have a loose feed, we will expect less cleaning and less waste. The reason is strong opening and teasing action if the clamp feed is there or if it loose feed is there, the opening action is going to be mild in nature and therefore, cleaning is also less and waste is less. Similarly, therefore, each of these parameters, they are listed here and you can study them one by one and try to understand. Let us I take another example. Let us say production rate, process parameter production rate is more. If we have more production rate, what will happen on cleaning? Cleaning is going to be less. If we have more production, the cleaning is going to be less, waste is going to be maybe more. Because if I feed too many fibers per unit time, it will not all the fibers will not get sufficient time to be cleaned. Hence, cleaning is going to be less, but waste is going to be more because beating and teasing actions per unit weight of fiber is going to reduce. That is the reason. Let us take another beater speed is more. The cause is, let us say beater speed is more. The beater speed we increase. Cleaning will be more, waste will be more because of aggressive beating action or aggressive teasing actions and the other risks which will be there if we want to increase the intensity of the beating or teasing actions by either raising the speeds or by reducing the setting between the feed and the beater is that we can damage the fibers. You have to remember this that whatever we do, if too much of stress acts on the fibers, the fibers will break, the fibers will get damaged, that possibility is there and it is especially true when you try to process very fine fibers. When you process very long and fine fibers, we have to be very careful about the speed of the bitter and the settings also. So, the cause and effect 
and possible regions are listed in this particular table. Now, few important points that you all remember is that at a given production rate, more is the waste, more will be the cleaning. So, for a given fixed production rate, if I can increase the percentage of waste, I can expect more cleaning. We have to see whether the waste is becoming rich in lint or not. Cleaning is not possible without generating waste as the escape route of trash will also allow some good fibers to escape because trash and particles and the fibers they will escape together because there is only few you know, escape routes which are available and the escape routes are the gaps between the uh, grid bars. So, these gaps are sufficiently though they are very small, but it is large for many fibers. So, many fibers will be able to pass through those gaps or tiny tufts may some can, can also pass through. So, one has to be very careful about the trash, the lint, trash to lint ratio, lint in waste should be in the range of 20 to 30 percent. That means, we can expect 7 to 80 percent should be the trash particles if possible that is what we should aim for. The cleaning efficiency of individual cleaner varies between 10 to 35 percent. There are many studies which are there if you read the research papers you will find that typically the whatever cleaning units or equipment that we have in the blow room line the cleaning efficiency generally varies between 10 to 35 percent. So, machines which are at the starting point of the blow room line, their cleaning efficiency is more maybe 25 percent and the machines which are situated at the end of the line, their cleaning efficiency is less because initially the trash particles are large and heavy. So, they can easily be extracted whereas by the time we have removed the larger trash particles and heavier particles, we are left with smaller particles and smaller particles are more difficult to remove. So, the machines which are arranged in the end of the line, they find it more difficult to extract the finer particles and therefore, their cleaning efficiency comparatively will be less than the machines which are placed in the beginning of the line. That statement is given here. Initial beaters and cleaners deal with heavier trash particles, which are easier to remove because they are heavy and they are being large and therefore, when I am beating them, their centrifugal force is very high. They can easily escape through the openings of the grid bars and they are not tenaciously attached to the fibers also. Typical values are quoted here, trash percentage more than 5 in the input. Beating point let us say is 5, cleaning efficiency will be around 65 percent and if we go a trash level of 1 to 3 percent and beating points will be used around 3, the cleaning efficiency will be around 55 percent. So, when the trash percentage is less, the cleaning efficiency is less also because now we have trash particles which are much smaller in size and they are more difficult to remove. So, some typical values are shown here that the chlorine cleaning efficiency as a whole can vary between 55 to 65 percent. Now, we will discuss another important point called cleaning resistance. See here on the right hand side there is a diagram, trash percentage but cleaning efficiency this diagram we have already seen, but this diagram we have plotted for three varieties of cotton, variety 1, 2 and 3. 
for a given cleaning equipment, let us say cleaner A, whatever it is. Now, what we see here, if we look at this line, that the slope of the lines are different. That means the slope between trash and cleaning for cotton 1, cotton 2, and cotton 3 are different. For a given level of trash, let us say 2 percent trash, if we go upwards vertical and we cut these lines black, orange and blue and from there we draw a line which is perpendicular to the cleaning efficiency axis that is y axis. Then what we see for a given value of trash, cotton 3 cleaning efficiency is very high more than 20 percent, cotton 2 shows a cleaning efficiency of maybe 18 percent cotton 1 gives a cleaning efficiency may be close to 10 percent. That means, for the same trash level, for the same material, same trash level, not the material, materials are different, the same trash level for this cleaning, clean out is same, the cleaning efficiency are different for three different varieties of cotton. That means, cotton 3 is easy to clean, then cotton 2 and cotton 2 is easier to clean than cotton 1. So, that means the resistance to cleaning are different for different cotton. Why it is so? With the presence of different nature of trash in the cotton. So the trash can be categorized into two groups broadly. One is loose and coarse trash particles, another one is small particles of trash. So, what are loose coarse particles? These are husk, whole seeds or part of seed, stone chips, these are known as loose and coarse trash particles. These particles do not closely mixed with fibers and heavier than fiber, so they can be removed easily, they are easily removable. Whereas, small particles of trash, paper trash or seeds fragments, so coat, seed coat fragments, which are also closely mixed with fibers, these are difficult to remove. So, all what does it matter is the nature of trash which is present in the, it is not the percentage of trash value which is there in the cotton, but in that trash what proportion is really small trash particles where seed coat fragments are more or not that matters and whether it is consisting of loose trash particles which is easier to remove. So, the proportion of the trash in terms of small particles or loose and coarse particles may vary from variety to variety. And therefore, it has been seen that different cotton offers different cleaning resistance. The other thing we are going to discuss now is topped wet. We have discussed that as we open the materials, the size of the tarps becomes smaller and smaller. So, here there is a diagram on the right hand side, where what is plotted on the right hand side, these are the machines feed and then M 1, M 2, M 3, machine 1, machine 2, machine 3. So, M stands for machines and on the y axis, we have topped weight gram per tapped. And if you look at this, the values are on the 10 to the power 0 is represented by the blue line and on the top above we have 10 to the power minus 1, 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 3 and at the bottom we have 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 2. So, they are positive and here they are negative values. So, what we see here is that the, the weight of the tops is gradually reducing. You should interpret this particular graph. It is not that the weight is increasing, the weight is actually reducing. 
because here the unit is 10 to the power minus 1 gram, 10 to the power minus 2 gram that means the weight is actually becoming less and less. So, as the top progresses through the bronum line, its weight keeps on reducing because I am breaking the tops into smaller and smaller pieces. So, it is a result of breaking actions. An exact evaluation of degree of opening should ideally take into account the breaking apart and change in density. That means, I am breaking also I am changing the volume of the top. We have discussed them at the beginning of this series of lectures. Both of the them are happening simultaneously. A top is becoming voluminous, top is also losing its weight. So, actually to judge the degree of opening, we must have some means to measure both of them. Since both measures can be obtained only with considerable effort, the average top weight is usually chosen. See, measuring the density of a top is very, very difficult. Measuring the weight of a top is much easier. So, we resort to this fact that we measure the weight of the top. Measurement of volume is difficult. Why? Because tops have no specific shape. We cannot describe the shape of a top by any, any geometrical figure. Its edges of the top is not well defined, shape is not well defined these the edges of the top or the surface of the top is not well defined. Somehow, it is little density may vary from one end to other end. So, a lot of difficulties are there in measuring the exact volume of top. So, that is what is avoided. We only try to measure the weight of the tops. So, top weight has varies between 0 to 70 mg depending upon the beta opener type this has been shown and average top weights after the bell opening machine has been shown to be around 40 to 40 plus minus 15 milligram by some authors. So, here now on the right hand side there is a table which indicates the class interval of the top weight and observed frequency. You must have learned this thing in your basic statistics course while you have been taught about the distribution, class interval versus frequency are there and then you must have calculated what is the average or what is the CV. Here we want to fit a distribution curve and if we fit a distribution curve, class interval versus observed frequency, we get a curve which looks like this as shown in the diagram. And this curve which you have seen here is basically an exponential curve. So, exponential distribution has been shown to describe the weight of tufts. after a particular you know, opening or cleaning equipment. If we collect those tops and find out the weight and try to see the distribution, then we will be able to fit an exponential distribution. That means, what is the, if we want to know what is this the exponential distribution? The distribution has a density function described as f x is alpha e to the power minus alpha x and for all exponential distribution the mean is 1 upon alpha and standard deviation is also 1 upon alpha. So, the value of alpha is how much? 1 upon mean. So, if I can find out the mean value of this class in, of this distribution of tops, so 1 upon mean will be the value of alpha. So, if alpha is known for different class intervals, we can find out what is the expected frequency and in this particular table, these are the expected frequency, these are the observed frequency, the actual frequency and these are the frequencies 
which has been calculated based on exponential distribution. So, you see the kind of matching 39 actual expected is 31, 21, 24, 16, 19, 11, 15 these are the corresponding values and it has been shown that this is how this can be described the actual nature of the distribution of topped weight follows exponential distribution. That means, smaller tops are more in number and larger tops are less in number. That basically means as U F is looks, let us say 0 to 4 milligram tops are 39 in number, whereas 60 to 70 milligram range tops are only 1. So, if you look at these values here or there, you will find as I go to the smaller size or smaller class interval, the values are high. That is why the frequency is high here and this corresponds to low value of top weight. That means, smaller tops are more in number and larger tops are small in number. The other thing is variation in weight of the lab, if we produce a lab. Then this could be also an index. The weight variation between labs, the total weight of a lab could be maximum could be 40 kilo, it could be 22 kilo, 25 kilo depending upon in the you know mill, but the variation of the total weight should be between 0 0.6 to 1 percent ACV value. This is the industrial standard. The other thing we try to find out is weight variation within lab, meter to meter variation. That means, we take a lab, unroll the lab and cut 1 millimeter, 1 meter pieces, not 1 millimeter, 1 meter pieces. So, if a lab is 40 meter in length, we remove the first 1 meter and we also remove the last 1 meter and then we take cut samples of 1 meter length and let us say we take 20 samples or 30 samples and then we can find out what is the average value of weight of those 1 meter pieces of lab and then we can find out what is the standard deviation what is the C B. So, that variation of C B should be around 1 to 2 percent. If it is more than this, that means there is need to have some corrective action. Okay? And with that, we close this particular lesson. Thank you.